and welcome to Counting to 100 in 100 Languages. It's a really fun project I'm doing where I basically learn to count to 100 in 100 languages and I give a brief historical um, a synopsis of um, the language history of um, the language I'm speaking of. Um, so today I'm doing Japanese and uh, I had a lot of fun uh, learning about this language. Uh, the history was a little bit complicated but I think I got it down. Um, the numbers were very simple. They have a very simple counting system. Um, it's um, very easy for anybody to learn. Really, like as long as you know the first ten numbers, it's just to make compound numbers or making any number after that. You basically um, just have to use the formula to combine numbers in order to um, be able to count uh, after ten. So, anyways, I'm gonna get started with the history. I always do that. I always uh, speak, uh, talk a little bit about the history of the language, and then I start counting. So, Japanese is a member of the Japonic language family, which comprises of Japanese and Wikuyaum. Um. Um, I think I'm saying that right. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but basically, there's only um, there's two only two languages in this um, in this Japonic lang language family. Relation to other modern languages is debatable. Its relation to Korean is debated among linguists. Right now, it is listed as a language isolate. Um, Japanese is an agglutinative language, meaning that. Um, Morphemes remain unchanged when being fused to make a word. And the morpheme, as we've discussed in the past, is the smallest meaningful unit in a language. There are no grammatical numbers or genders to nouns, uh, which is really interesting, actually. So uh, the nouns don't change, um, even in the plural form, I believe, and um, neither do um, the genders, as usually happens in Latin languages. That's very common that uh, the noun would have a different, um, would change depending on the gender. Um, Japanese is not related to Chinese in terms of its linguist's root, but it does not. It does use Chinese characters significantly. Um, that's also an interesting fact. I kind of knew that because I've, I've heard people tell me that before, but just being the ignorant Westerner, I guess I always just assumed there was some like root <laughs> long time ago that would um, where they started off from the same language, but they didn't. Um, the Japanese writing system also uses syllabic scripts known as katakana and hiragana uh, scripts. Uh, the Japanese number system makes use of mainly Arabic numerals as well as Chinese numerals. Verbs are conjugated for um, tense and voice but not person. Um, it, has very, it has a very complex system for honorifics, indicating the status of speaker, listening, and person uh, subject being discussed. This is of course because Japanese has a broad grammatical system to express politeness and formality due to um, higher, 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 hierarchical um, society, uh, more so from the, their history, not so much now, I believe. So that's also another, I think, that um, really a new thing for like um, people that speak English or even Latin languages. There is um, more um, changes in grammar in Latin languages, I believe, than English when you're referring to somebody um, of higher status or you're trying to be more polite. Um, there is like, uh, the pronouns can be different. But in Japanese, it's kind of taken to more extreme, like the whole language basically changes according to uh, the status of the person you're speaking. And it's much more complex than that. But um, anyways, I don't know enough about it to go too much into detail. But um, that was, uh, that was really interesting to learn about. Um, so, uh, Proto-Japonic Proto -Japonic uh, is the common ancestor of Japanese and Ryukoyan languages. And it is believed to have been brought to Japan by migrants uh, from Asia and um, adjacent Pacific Islands uh, in early to mid um, 2nd century BC, replacing uh, the languages of the original Jomon inhabitants um, which are actually, so the Jomon inhabitants were there before these um, other people came that um, started speaking uh, what we now call, what eventually evolved into J uh, Japanese. Um, but these Jomon inhabitants um, spoke another language which, um, uh, which right now, um, which evolved into what we, what modern Ainu language is considered as a descent. So modern Ainu, it's A-I-N-U language is considered a descendant of the Jomon people's language, languages or language, uh, which I thought was really interesting too. So Japanese is actually not, um, wasn't the, the language of the first inhabitants, but of the second migration of inhabitants to Japan. 
Um, hardly anything is known about this period because no writing system until it was um, uh, no writing system existed until it, um, it was brought by the Japanese. So yeah, um, that area did not have a writing system. Um, they eventually did have a writing system, but that was only because the Chinese brought it over. So that's another interesting fact, actually. Well, I, I think I kind of knew that because um, Chinese civilization kind of spread everywhere and brought about um, many cultural changes, but um, yeah. Okay, text did not appear until the 8th century, and little is known about the language beforehand. At first, texts were written in classical Chinese, but later transformed to a mixed style where Chinese characters um, were being used for Japanese transliteration. This is, of course, because literacy was introduced to Japan via the Chinese um, scholars before the 5th century. That's how we said that, but... Um, old Japanese attained considerable amount of vocabulary and influence from Chinese. A uh, period of old Japanese ends in 794, end of the Nara period, and I'm sure you could Google that and learn more about the Nara period, but I don't want to go into too much detail right now. Um, yeah, and like I said, old Japanese was written in Chinese characters. Uh, early Middle Japanese, the Heian period, Heian period, uh, which was between 794 and 1185, um, was uh, again influenced, um, had more influence from the Chinese on phonology, which is like the sound of the word. Um, and it was also written in Chinese characters. A late Middle Japanese from 1185 to 1600 came about with more changes, including the first European loan loans. So, and then early modern Japanese period was um, from the 17th century to mid 19th century. And in this time period, Japanese used katagana and hiragana as well as Chinese characters uh, for their writing system, which is what we use in modern Japanese as well. So um, their writing system kind of added this um, to other, uh, I believe, what they are called syllabic scripts. Uh, modern Japanese started developing um, in the Edo period between the 17th and the 19th century. Uh, sakuku which was a Japan self-imposed isolation, isolation ended in 1853. After that, more and more European loanwords were added to the language. Um, uh, the same as early modern Japanese. Modern Japanese uses kanji, Chinese characters. Kanji are Chinese characters. Uh, kata, katagana and hiragana as the writing system. So just as the uh, early modern Japanese. Uh, again, katagana and hiragana are the syllabic scripts I spoke of earlier. And guys, I am so sorry about the light. I don't know what's going on with this lighting issue with my camera. <laughs> I look like a ghost right now, but uh, anyways, we're going to try to do the best with what we have. So uh, I'm going to count to 100 in Japanese right now. As I said earlier, it is very simple. Um, you basically count from... Um, if you know how to count from 1 to 10, you can basically make any compound number you want just by following a simple formula. Um, it is a little confusing where 4, 7, and 9 have two different ways of saying them. Um, there's a more common way of saying it, and then there's a le le less common way of saying it. I will go over both. Okay. 1 is ichi. 2 is ni. 3 is san. 4 is uh, four is yon or shi. Yon or shi. Uh, 5 is go. Um, 6 is wuku. wuku. 7 is... Um, uh, 7 is... Also, two ways of saying it is nana or shichi. Nana or shichi. So, um, with shichi, uh, the other way of saying seven, um, it's a little bit confusing. Um, it, it is spelled, the transliteration of it to, in, to Latin letters is um, S H I C H I, but um, you don't really pronounce the I. It's more like shichi. So, the S H doesn't really have a, um, a, uh, a uh, vowel to it. So uh, nana or shichi, and then eight is hachi. And nine is also two way of saying it is kyu or ku, kyu or ku. And then ten is ju. Okay, so now I'm gonna go um, from um, making the compound numbers of ten. Uh, they're very simple. All you say is ten, and then the single unit after that. So you say ju, uh, ju ichi, uh, ju ni, ju sa, ju um, ju yon or ju shi. So ju yon or ju shi for 14 because it has two different there's two different ways of saying four and then 15 is ju go 16 is ju ku 17 is there's two ways of saying it so ju nana and or ju shi 18 is ju hachi 19 is ju um, kyu or ju ku 
So juku, uh, ju or juku. And then twenty is very simple. All you basically gotta um, all you basically gotta do is you just say two ten because twenty is two times ten. So we're gonna say niju niju. Uh, that's 20 and since I'm already on the tens of the numbers I'm just gonna repeat all the tens of the numbers to you guys and then we'll go from there so uh, niju sanju 40 is um, two ways of saying it again is uh, yonju or shiju uh, or shiju uh, 50 is um, um, uh, go goju 60 is wukuju uh, wukuju 60 is, I mean 70 is uh, nanaju or shiju. Um, 80 is hachiju and 90 is kyuju. So you never say kuju, you just say kyuju. Um, it's not ku, it's not kuju like that. That part, um, the other variation of saying nine, you don't use it for making the tens of nine. So you say kyuju, and then um, we'll talk about a hundred when we get there. I'm not gonna mention it yet because let me just do the compound numbers of the, of um, uh, of the uh, let me just go over the compound numbers of the tens of the numbers. Uh, now, also, um, I did want to mention that um, uh, for four, for like the number of four and forty and so forth, a yon is more uh, commonly used than shi. Uh, shi. Yon is more commonly used than shi. And then for seven uh, as well, um, nana is more commonly used than shi. Uh, for seventy and seventy, and then also yeah, and then ninety for um, the tens of the number. You, for 90, you're going to only use kyuju, you know, you're going to say kuju. Okay, so I'm, oh, oops, my alarm. Okay, I am going to go from 20 to 40, uh, and then um, after that, I'm going to just uh, not count every single number. Okay, so uh, as we said before, uh, 20 is niju, and 21 is niju, um, niju ichi, 22 is niju ni, 23 is niju um, san, 24 is um, niju uh, niju yon or niju uh, shi niju yon or niju uh, niju shi 25 is niju go 26 is uh, niju um, woku 27 is niju nana or niju uh, shi 28 is uh, niju uh, hachi 29 is niju um, kyu or niju ku uh, niju kyu or niju ku. Um, and 30 is, uh, as we made, uh, as we said before, is sanju, sanju. So I'm going to go from 30 to 40. Uh, sanju, uh, sanju ichi is sanju ni. Sanju, um, 33 sanju san. Sanju um, yon or sanju shi. San, that was 44. Sanju yon or sanju shi. Um, 35 is uh, sanju uh, go, 36 is sanju uku, uh, 37 is sanju um, nana or sanju shi, uh, 30, yeah, so that was um, 37, the two ways of saying it. 38 is uh, sanju hachi, uh, 39 is sanju uh, kyu or sanju ku, sanju kyu or sanju ku, and then 40 is, uh, we're gonna, um, we're gonna say uh, we're gonna say yon um, yonju for now. Um, you can say uh, shiju as well, um, but let's just do 31, 32, 33, and then I'm gonna jump to I mean I'm sorry 41, 42, 43, and then I'm gonna jump to 49, and then I'll do the different way of saying 40 as well. So uh, so we're gonna go with uh, yonju um, ichi, yonju ni, yonju uh, san. And then uh, 49 is yonju um, q or yonju ku. Okay, now I'm gonna say the different way of saying 40, which is shiju, shiju, uh, shiju um, ichi, shiju, uh, shiju, um, shiju ni, shiju san. And then I'm gonna jump up to, four, uh, to 49, uh, which is um, shiju, uh, shiju ku or uh, shiju q or shiju ku. Okay. Uh, 50 is, as we said before, is a goju, goju, goju. Um, so, um, uh, goju ichi, goju, uh, goju, sorry, goju ichi, goju uh, ni, goju uh, san, and uh, 59 is 
uh, go to um, Q or go to cook. And 60 is um, uh, what what could um, do? What could do? What could you um, what could you eat? What, what could you um, need? What could you send? And let's jump up to 69, which is what could you what could you um, cute? What could you cute or what could you uh, cook? Okay, what could you? You or what could you cook? All right, uh, now we're gonna jump up to 70. And uh, again, 70, two different ways of saying it. Uh, we can say um, nanaju. Uh, so I'm gonna go with that first. I'm gonna go 71, 72, 73, and then 79. And then I'll say the different way of saying 70. So um, nanaju ichi, nanaju uh, ni, nanaju, um, nanaju san, and then 79 is nanaju. Um, Q or nanaju ku. All right, let's go and say the different way of saying seventy, which is um, shi uh, shi. Uh, so shi ju ichi, shi ju ni, shi ju san, shi ju san, and seventy nine would be shi ju Q or shi ju ku, shi ju ku. So two different ways. So, so there's actually four different ways of saying um, 79, I guess. <laughs> and also with the other numbers that you changed, is can be four different ways of saying um, 77, four different ways of saying uh, 74. So um, anyways, all right. So um, 80 um, is Hachiju. Hachiju. Hachiju uh, Ichi. Hachiju. Um, Hachiju. Hachiju Ichi, Hachiju Ni, Hachiju um, San, and then uh, 89 is Hachiju, um, Hachiju uh, Q or Hachiju Ku, and then um, 90 is um, Kyuju, Kyuju, and this is very not easy that uh, we don't have to, um, we don't have to worry about uh, being, 90 being said in two different ways because you only say Kyuju, you don't say Kukju, you just say Kyuju. Uh, so 91 is uh, Kyuju um, Ichi, 92 Kyuju, um, 92 is Kyuju um, Ni, 93 is Kyuju San, and then 99 is Kyuju um, Kyuju Q, Kyuju Q or Kyuju Ku. All right, 100 is um, uh, Hyaku, Hyaku. So it's like when I was learning about it, you basically say the like hi and then a y a at the end, but you combine it together. So hia, hia ko, hia ko. Uh, all right, guys. I hope I pronounced this well. Um, I apologize to any Japanese people if I butchered your language, but I had really fun learning these. And uh, thank you so much for watching. God bless, and I hope you guys uh, stay tuned for more videos.